Well, welcome back to Shrimpling Park Farm. Believe it or not, it is now two years since we started these video diaries in response to the start of the COVID-19 pandemic and the cancellation of all our school visits at the time. The feedback has been unexpectedly wonderful, thank you. It's also an unforeseen joy to have had such lovely communication with our neighbours and friends near to the farm and further afield. And it's been so rewarding for a farmer to be able to share what we do. We thought we'd do a couple of these and then the world would be back to normal. But we're still going and we've had two full harvests since then. The seasons have come and gone and you'll recognise comforting repetitions, planting, shearing, lambing, harvest. But just as the world has seen extraordinary times and sadly still does, so it seems that no two weeks on the farm are ever the same. One day we will do a full review, but for now all the past diary films can be found at our website. If you want to remind yourself of what happens when, We'll continue to document what happens in this little corner of Suffolk and as ever do let us know if there's anything specific you want to know about or see. But for now we've just come to the end of a month which certainly saw the transition from winter to spring with gales, floods, a heat wave and finishing off with a nice bit of snow. Welcome to March. The sheep are moving gently towards their lambing time. These lovely pregnant mummies are eating the last of the haylage that we made for them last summer. Thankfully, we just about had enough. So today, our lovely shepherding team have got those ewes, those pregnant mummies, back in again. This time is to do what they call crutching. Very, very gently trimming the wool around their teats and their back ends, getting rid of the winter mud and the dirt so that they can be nice and clean, ready for when they have their lambs outside at the beginning of April. This is a really skilled job. on the move to nice new clean pastures ready for lambing. They're getting quite used to crossing the A134 and the drivers we have to stop are really patient and respectful so thank you whoever you are. Uh, these are like late lambing twins. Okay so they're going off to far far away pastures. So they've got some good grass where they're going to go. Brilliant. So for the last two weeks. Yeah. yeah. Okay see you later. These lovely ewe lambs are the young ones and not going to have babies this year. They've been grazing our green manures, but now it's time for them to move off as we need to get planting our spring sown crops. Just doing a light cultivation just to cut the weeds off. Do you want some lunch? <laughs> I do. <laughs> so this green manure, as we call it, is where we planted a crop after the last crop harvested last year in order just to stay in the ground and cover the soil all winter until we put a spring crop in the ground. The purpose is to capture the carbon. The purpose is to feed the soil a bit with more fertility. We feed our sheep on it in the winter. It prevents from any soil erosion and generally all rounds a pretty good soil protector. If you're not an organic farmer, you can spray this off and plant straight into it. If you're organic, you can't. John's gonna take one cultivator through it and hope the sun will burn off the roots and he hopes to take just one more cultivator through it before it's able to be planted. So I really do. How are you getting on? We're getting on very well. The weather's finally dry enough so we can get along with our spring drilling. Always great, great to be getting seasoned. and spring barley. Barley will be going for making beer and the oats will be going for making breakfast cereal. How's it going? It's going really well. It's going very well indeed. Uh, really ideal conditions. Um, so really pleased, yeah. But then the rain came and it stopped the planting but it did water in what we'd already done. What your side you're on? 7.2. And all the time, lorries come to the farm and go from the farm, delivering things and collecting things. What have you come to deliver? I've come to deliver pea seed. Pea seed? Pea seed. Brilliant. Yeah. What have you come to pick up? Malt with barley, isn't it? Malt with barley, yeah. Where's it going? Going to Holland. Are you going to take it then? Yes, yeah. So you'll go on the boat tonight? Yeah, um, or the train, yeah. Depends which one we get to. You'll go on the train? Could do, yeah. It's, it's only like three hours drive to Holland from, from Calais. 
Why are you tipping it up? Because I've just had it sanitised and washed down the road there, so it's still a little bit damp in there. It has to be sanitised every six weeks. So. Yes, Where do you go to get your inside of your lorry wash? There's various places, there's a lot of truck stops that do it. How are you weighing it? I've got an onboard weighing system. When that's roughly 29000, that's me on the next one. Right, so you just look too much in. Yeah, just a second. Have you ever filled it a bit? <laughs> <laughs> We're down to the last grain. <laughs> So he's off to take the organic malting barley to Holland. And then, of course, there's the all-important fuel delivery. I'm Andy, and I've come to deliver the diesel. Okay. What's the price of that at the moment? I think it's quite expensive. <laughs> are you finding everyone's filling up? They are, yeah. More so than normal? It seems to be at the moment, yeah. What have you come to deliver? I've got the sheep bin. Ah, you've got oh, the yeah. sheep bin. Brilliant. Yeah. Okay, bring it on. Where do you want it? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, me... And then a very jolly photographer called Paul Gregory was sent by his publisher to photograph a recipe John had submitted for a cookbook. We have been photographing this fantastic farm for Jenny Jeffrey's new book, The Love of the Lamb 2. We've barbecued butterfly shoulder of lamb. We've been round the pond. We've scared the sheep. No, we've photographed the sheep. We've had lots of fun. And what's the best hint for trying to photograph a farm? Bring a pair of wellies. <laughs> Food photography really is a special art. What are you doing now? Just brushing with oil to give it that glisten and using some of the, um, the juices. Our barbecued butterfly leg of Shimpling Park lamb it became one of our lockdown treats and remains a firm family yeah, favourite yeah. now to be shared. So you're prettifying it now? This is, pretty, this is technically styling. I'm in the <laughs> <laughs> So, so what are you doing today? So we're testing for carbon in the soil uh, at two different depths, so the 0 to 30 and also 30 to 60. So we're looking at sequestered carbon as well as what's being stored and used by the plants. Looking at the carbon sequestered in a farm and how that can kind of tie in with climate change and global warming and what farms are already doing uh, to take carbon from the atmosphere and store it in the ground. You know, the next phase from that will be, uh, are there certain crops or certain rotations, certain practices that are better for sequestering carbon. So this whole thing will lower down yeah. and uh, the samples will end up in these buckets and it will automatically split it into the two depths for me. Oh, that's 0 to 30. And then that that's is 30 your to 60. 30 to 60. Hundred and forty eight samples for one field. Hundred and forty eight samples for one field. Yeah, That's it's fair. it's very, very thorough. The idea being uh, we want to pinpoint where carbon is being stored. I don't want to just say this field has more than this field, I wanna say this corner of this field is doing, you know, better than the top end or far end. And then can start looking into why that is. The sun came out and the team set to with the main job, getting those spring crops in the ground. That's pretty high tech, isn't it, John? Oh, yes. What are you doing? Conservation. Again? Yeah. <laughs> it's like the fourth bridge. Can't so we're putting a lot of fertility back into the soil, which is great, so I think it will, it'll be good. So for the second time over, John's taking a slightly lighter cultivator and therefore you can pull it with a much lower horsepower tractor so it uses less fuel. And there's a lot of very field specific discussion, trialling and trying to make sure you get the best possible seedbed with the least amount of passes or travels with tractors and it seems to differ from every day and every field. How's the cultivating going today John? It's going really, <laughs> it's going really well actually. Um, it's just such a lovely sunny day, I think it's the last sunny day we're going to get it. Yes, it's really good for killing weeds. When you plant spring crops, do they come up and get harvested at the same time as the autumn crops? Uh, pretty much, yeah. Some spring crops even come before um, winter crops. They sort of all blend in, which is good. 
Do they yield more or less than winter crops? Generally spring crops yield less, um, but the quality is often better. So you might get a less yield, but you get a better price. And why do you plant spring crops? Because we like to have a mixture of winter and spring crops, because if you always plant spring crops or you always plant winter crops, you get select certain weeds that like germinating in the winter and the spring. Um, and also it spreads the risk of disease and also pests as well. So it's good to have a mixture of winter spring crops. Basically the yellow is where I've been and yep. the green is where I have them. What are you putting in your iPad? Um, so I'm just making a note of uh, what hectares I took each bag. And for this one I'm also making a note of what number the bro had what seed. So we can come back and look at the trials. So you'll know exactly what seed came from where, went yep. the bits of the ground. Exactly, and then when the combine comes in and maps the yield, it all cross references them. Yeah, it's amazingly it's accurate, nice. the whole system, isn't it? Yeah, got to be yeah. in this day and age. Yeah. Are you steering it at all? Okay. It's steering itself? Yes. Uh, all I do for the field is turn around at the end. I drive around the field three times, back the headland, yeah. then use the steering on the second two. And then once you get into the middle of the field, I turn on the headland, pick my line, press the button, drop the door, away we go. Fantastic! How's it going today, boys? Very well. Is it? Yeah. So you were cultivating and drilling on the same field at the same drilling. time? There's nothing we're not doing today. We're doing everything. <laughs> we don't usually work on a Sunday, but it's going to rain this week, so we've just decided to try and get finished. And as March draws to a close, we're just about there with the sowing of our spring crops. Blackthorn has its beautiful white flowers showing in the new hedges. The hawthorn's on leaf. Well, quite glad we finished drilling, because we've woken up to the ground thick with snow. Bit of an April the 1st surprise. Thank you for watching and for your feedback. As ever, do let us know if there's anything specific you'd like to see or want to know about. Thank you again so much for joining us. Everything cross for next month's where the Chimpling Park Farm should become lamb central and our crops hopefully will be up and away. Really look forward to seeing you next time.